Every time I try to make it on my own Every time I try to stand and start to fall All those lonely roads that I have traveled on There was Jesus When the life I built came crashing to the ground When the friends I had were nowhere to be found I couldn't see it then, but I can see it now Well, there was Jesus This man who needs amazing kind of grace mm -hmm. For forgiveness at a price I couldn't pay mm -hmm. I'm not, not perfect, perfect so I thank God, God every, every day. day There was Jesus There was Jesus to uh, weekly worship at uh, St. Paul. Uh, we are grateful you are here with us. My name is uh, Jake Jacobson, along with Christopher Wisner. We are the co-presidents of Student Council here at St. Paul, and we are collectively honored to be leading you in worship today. Wherever you are, we are glad you are here and encourage you to create a space of peace through candles or the Bible, whatever allows you to encounter God in these moments together. Let's begin by centering our hearts and minds as we enter worship together. The Lord will continually guide you and satisfy your needs and parts places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. With thanksgiving and praise, let us worship God. My name is Sarah Martin. I am a third year uh, student class representative of student council. And I would um, invite you to find a posture for a prayer that is comfortable for you as we join together in the prayer that our Lord Jesus Christ taught us to pray, as we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Good morning, everyone joining us for our very first chapel here at St. Paul School of Theology. My name is Leah, and uh, this is Lorianne, and Lorianne, Lorianne, yes, sorry, I know her well, Lorianne, <laughs> y'all can call me Leah now, um, and we are excited to bring you your first song of worship. Um, I wanted to say that I'm also on student council as a third year representative. Um, and if you have any questions or needs, um, my door is open, my email is open. So please, any uh, of us here on student council, you are welcome to ask questions and we can see how we can might help you out for this school year. Um, and our first song uh, we'll be singing today, we have sung in the past, but it might be fairly new. And I'd like to highlight that it's written by uh, one of our St. Paul alumni, Matt Beisel. And I just like to, um, lift up the ability to continue to use our gifts, our talents that we have here. And as we graduate, that we continue to use here at St. Paul and uh, really grateful that we can do that. So let's enter into a time of singing in worship. Peace, I've come to know. 
Good morning, everyone. My name is Tiffany Brewer, and I am a second year student council member, and I am the treasurer of student council. And this morning, I'm going to be doing an opening prayer as well as our scripture reading. And so if you could please be in prayer posture with me this morning. Holy One, we bless you with all that is within us as we remember your benefits to us. Open our hearts to helping those most in need, that our community and nation may be rebuilt and restored. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning is from Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 11. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to heal and a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silent and a time to speak out. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. What gain have the workers from their toil? I have seen the business that God has given to everyone to be busy with. He has made everything suitable for its time. Moreover, he has put a sense of past and future into their minds. Yet they cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. Our second scripture set this morning is from 2 Corinthians 8, 1 through 7. We want you to know, brothers and sisters, about the grace of God that has been granted to the churches of Macedonia. For during a severe ordeal of affliction, their abundant joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. For as I can testify, they voluntarily gave according to their means and even beyond their means begging us earnestly for the favor of partnering, partnering in this ministry to the saints. And not as we expected. Instead, they gave themselves first to the Lord and by the will of God to us, so that we might urge Titus that he has already made a beginning, so he should also complete this generous undertaking among you. Now, as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you. So we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. This reading today has been from the NRSV UE edition. <laughs> Will you pray with me? Almighty God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts and minds be of you, for you, and pleasing to you. Amen. I once heard the story of a little girl who was home alone and sick. She called her mother at work and told her, Mama, I need you, and I need you really bad right now. The mother asked to get off from the night shift she was working in and frantically rushed down to the corner CVS store to bring home some medicine. She notices that it's beginning to rain, but she thought she would just run in and out to get the medicine for her sick child. When she came back to her car, she noticed something quite different. A panic began to quickly set in. She realized that she had locked the 
keys in her car. She ran inside to get help from the employees, but none of them seemed to know what to do. And finally, they just gave her a clothes hanger and said, good luck. She ran back to her car, frantically trying to get the doors open. The more she tried, the harder it started to rain. And suddenly it came down in what we call an old fashioned gully washer. And out of desperation, she cried out, Lord, I need your help and I need it right now. Suddenly, an old pickup pulled up right next to her and she looked up and saw this man approaching her. He was dirty, had a, had a rugged complexion, a big scraggly beard and scars and tattoos all over his body. Certainly not someone that you would want to come across, especially at, alone at night in the rain. Without thinking, she embraced this man and said, sir, could you possibly help me? My daughter is sick at home and I have to get this mess into her as soon as possible and I've locked my keys in my car. Within a minute or two, this man had successfully unlocked her car. Out of joy, she grabbed this man, giving him a huge hug and said, thank you, you're such a nice man. The man pushed her away and said, no ma'am, I am not. I just got out of prison for serving a sentence for stealing cars. Without any hesitation, this woman looked up to heaven and said, thank you God for sending a professional. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, good morning. My name is Corey Shari, and I am one of our second year representatives serving on our student council for this year. And I'm joining you all from our chapel space here on the Oklahoma City campus of St. Paul School of Theology, where I attend class. It's an honor and a privilege to be preaching for our first chapel service of this semester and of this academic year. As we were first planning this service, Christopher and Jake sent out an email to all of the student council asking for people to be thinking about the parts of service they would be willing to lead. I noticed that the sermon section was blank, so without thinking and letting my ego get the better of me, I instantly sent back a reply saying something along the lines of, I would love to get the sermon. And as soon as I sent that reply, though, I began to have some second thoughts. I began to doubt what I could say to all of you, my fellow seminary students, let alone our wonderful faculty and staff. Who am I to be preaching in this service? Each of you have your own gifts, talents, and obviously a calling by God for some sort of ministry. We've all heard great sermons, know our Bibles, and are theologically minded individuals with a grasp of what God wants us to do and how God wants us to live. So who am I and what can I even say? That it was those two questions there that helped lead me to this sermon today. Because those two questions let me focus on our theme for this year, living gracefully during times of change. Change. Grace. Two things that often seem to contradict in the world that we find ourselves in. We're living in a time of great change. In some ways, this change seems to be moving too slow, such as expanding civil rights to all members of our community. And yet, change also seems to be moving much more rapidly than we seem to control, such as with the development of technology and social media. We either can't seem to keep up, or we find ourselves wanting to be a few steps ahead of where we actually are as a people. Change is a hard thing. Grace, though, it's an even harder thing still. We like to pride ourselves, especially as budding seminarians, that we have grace for all and through all. But if we're being realistic, we know that that simply isn't true all the time. Sure, we may have grace for those we're friends with, those we work with, members of our congregations, or even with the complete stranger that crosses our path. Yet I have found in my short 27 years on this earth that we often forget to have grace for ourselves. In doing that, we begin to grow a little cold. We begin to let ourselves stress a little too much. And then that lack of grace leaps into our everyday lives and into the lives of those we care for, for our brothers and sisters, sons and daughters, friends and foes. We begin to change, but not for the better. Whatever progress we may have made, we begin to take a step backwards from where we should be. Change with grace is a hard thing. Gracefully changing is a hard thing. Yet, that 
is our task. That is our challenge this year, to live gracefully during a time of immense change. But how do we do it? That is the million dollar question that I have been wrestling with for the past few weeks. The two passages of scripture I selected for today, I believe, give us a glimpse of that answer. Ecclesiastes is not the most positive of reading materials in scripture. It certainly is not the book that I would recommend reading if you want to get a warm and fuzzy feeling out of the Bible. <laughs> However, this specific passage out of chapter 3, it gives us something much more meaningful than just feeling good. It gives us some clarity on life and where we can find ourselves in on this journey. For everything, there is a season. For everything, there is a time. We're told the seasons of life and death, of war and peace, of winning and losing, of building and breaking. More than that, though, we are told that we are aware of those times. God has given us the vision of seeing the seasons of our lives come and go and where the next few steps of our adventure should take us. That God has given each of us our own tasks, our own work to do, yet we can't fathom the future of those plans that God has laid. We cannot fathom, we cannot yet see the finished product. If I'm being honest, I'm not sure we should be able to see the final product yet. I do not believe that we should know where our journey will take us in the end. I do not believe that our work's final project should be known to us, because if it was, we would lose out on how we should do the work with a generous and a grateful heart. Through this passage in Ecclesiastes, or though this passage in Ecclesiastes tells us about the different seasons, it doesn't necessarily tell us about how to go through with our work. It doesn't tell us how to do what we do, just that we should do it, knowing we cannot always understand the why. Where we find the how, though, is in the passage from 2 Corinthians. And the how is oh so much more important than just the what. What we do will be so different for each of us. All of us are on our own journeys, doing different work to build a piece of the kingdom of God here on earth. But our how should be in lockstep with one another. The how is in living generously. Generously giving of ourselves to something much bigger than we can ever imagine. We find, reading this passage, that St. Paul is giving praise to the churches of Macedonia for the generosity that has been given to their communities, even through immense struggle and strife. Through hard lives, they still find it within themselves to give something, to give back to communities that have brought them up to this point. Living generously in a time of change. A change they could not fully understand, an end product that they would never get to see. We find in the scripture a great hope and challenge that though we may be growing in our faith, in our hope, in our knowledge, and in our eagerness, we should also be growing in our generosity. And what generosity should we be given? The generosity of grace. Grace is the tool that will make the change that we so desperately need to achieve possible. Grace beyond grace. Grace given to our friends and our foes, to our classmates and our professors, to our faculty and our staff, to our congregations and co-workers, to stranger and familiar, and most importantly to ourselves. In a time filled with change, needed change, grace is the tool. Grace is the gift given to us by God to make our work worthwhile. This change that we will be living this year, going through with one another, requires us to give generously of ourselves to our work, to each other, to ourselves, with a grace-filled heart. We will make mistakes. We will struggle. Life is a struggle. The struggle bus is real, people, despite what we try to convince ourselves. Life is not easy. What makes it so joyful, though, what enables us to get up each morning, even for those 8 a.m. classes is the hope that we find in God and in each other, believing that we will have grace for one another. 
So that is my challenge to each of you, students, faculty, staff, alumni, and to any guests who may be joining us is, as we begin and go through this year, understand the season you are in, the work that you are doing, and give and live a life filled with generous grace, unrestrained grace, generous grace that will lead us to doing good work, doing good change, making change done right. And all of God's people said, amen. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me, save what thou art. Though my best thought by day or by night, waking or sleeping, thy prayer my light. Be thou my wisdom and thou my true word. I ever with thee and thou with me, Lord. Thou my great father and I thy true son. Thou not, nor man's empty praise, thou mine inheritance, now and always, thou and thou only, first in my heart, I King of heaven, my treasure thou art. High King of heaven, my victory won, may I reach heaven's joys, O bright heaven sun. Heart of my own heart, whatever befall, still be my vision, O Amen. Brent, my name is uh, Christopher Weisner. I'm one of the co-presidents here uh, for St. Paul Student Council. Um, thank you so much for joining us in worship uh, this morning. It has been wonderful to hear the message proclaimed, to pray together, um, and to sing together as we enter into this like new school year. So for those who have been on this journey for a while, it's good to see your faces once again. For those who are just now starting with us, man, we are super excited to do this uh, journey together and can't wait to meet and learn um, each of your names and faces and stories and, uh, and do this journey with you as well. And so with that, um, if, you, if this is your first year here, uh, we'd love for some people to be joining our student council. So we will need first year representatives and so if you would consider being a part of student council, and we do so many things to support the community here at St. Paul, um, more information will be coming out later on our first year representative uh, elections. So be on the lookout for that. You'll either see it in the campus messenger or we'll just send it out in an email blast. With that said, guess what? Everybody's welcome to student council meetings. And these are really easy to remember. They happen every first Tuesday of each month. Right, So the first Tuesday of each month at 12 p.m. also will be broadcasted and put out there as well. But all are welcome to come to share and give uh, feedback and input on how we can continue to grow together as one community as we live forth in these shifting seasons, right? Um, because 
it's really hard to live generously if you're all by yourself on this journey, right? And so um, I would like to, with that, I would like to close us in prayer. If you would pray with me. God, we thank you uh, for bringing us together this morning to encourage one another, um, to be strengthened uh, by your scripture and by your word proclaimed, by music and God, by presence. Would you do something special this year uh, at St. Paul? Would you continue to move us in mighty and powerful ways that we would grow in love, in joy, in justice, and in grace? Help us, God, to be people who live generously in these changing times, who are people who are filled by the spirit of grace and love. We thank you, God, that we get to do this journey together, that we are never alone, for you are always with us. It's all in your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Every time I try to make it on my own Every time I try to stand and start to fall All those lonely roads that I have traveled on 